technology to stay with Kramer. Coming up, volatile mix? When the market gets rough, Wall Street turns to the VIX for answers. And no one knows the fear index better than the man who created it. Kramer sits down exclusively with its inventor just ahead. On a day where the average has just got killed, it's worth talking about the mechanics of the market, specifically the way the SIBO volatility index, better known as the VIX, sometimes called the fear gauge, tends to shoot higher whenever the broad market gets slammed. And it sure did that today. Now, I don't really like trading something along the lines of the VIX, but lately there's been a lot of interest in exchange-traded funds that mirror the volatility index. The problem, though, is that most ETFs out there are simply not suitable as longer-term investments. Many of these ETFs are really just trading vehicles that rebalance every day, and the commodity ETFs that own futures can cause you to get slammed every month when they roll over their futures contracts. This is something we've been talking about for ages. And now there's finally a company that's coming out with ETFs designed for the purposes of investing, not just short-term trading. I'm talking about AccuShares, a privately held company that just a few weeks ago filed to register a new volatility ETF and six new commodity ETFs with the Securities and Exchange Commission. These are exchange-traded funds that are finally designed to work the way you and I think they should, intuitively. One of the reasons I have faith in AccuShares is that they brought in Dr. Robert Whaley. He's the man who created the VIX, who's also done some tremendous academic work exposing the flaws of some of the ETFs as a partner and strategic advisor. Now, tonight we've got a chance to speak with Dr. Whaley of Vanderbilt University about what's wrong with the vast bulk of exchange-traded funds. Professor Whaley, welcome to Mad Money. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you for asking me. Okay, have a seat. Father of the VIX. Well, let's go right to it. The it. VIX today started at 1398, spiked to 1634, and then went to 1589. What should that mean to our viewers who are largely uh, individual investors, not big, big hedge fund members? Um, what we need to be concerned about is, is, is why it made those moves, and I don't really understand it today. I didn't see any big news events. I've been traveling up from Nashville, and, and so I missed part of it. Um, it seemed to be more technicals that were being influenced. Well, that, um, that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I agree with you. I'm going to talk about that uh, earlier in the show, but um, it, 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 there's fear of unknown unknowns. I mean, this, this gauge of yours, uh, we'll get to in a second how you came up with it, is often a gauge of things that we don't know that could go wrong, though, right? It absolutely is. Um, and um, it's set, I mean, essentially set by the people who trade put options in the S&P 500 market. Um, some information is coming to them and they become nervous about some issue and they run out and buy insurance. Um, and that's what drives the, the value of the VIX up. Okay, well one of the things that AccuShares is trying to do is make it so that if you wanted a fair way to invest rather than day trade, you are developing that. Can you explain the difference between what people are trading now versus what you're hoping to give them? Absolutely, and you've had your, your finger on it for years now, but um, um, right now what they're trading is futures indices. And futures indices, uh, the most popular ones, are there are 30 days to maturity. And um, that futures price curve is steeply in contango. We better, you know, I know we're not, ah, okay. we're not all students in your class, so <laughs> okay. you, you, you if, gotta if, use English. If you look at the nature of, of the futures price curve, um, it, uh, the futures prices increase with increased term to maturity. Right. Um, so it goes up. Uh, as you hold the futures position, uh, that futures price is drawn in down towards the cash index VIX level. So if you think about what they're doing on, on VIX ETFs, what they're doing is concentrating at the 30-day level. They get pulled down one day, pulled down the curve, they lose money, and then they rewrite the contracts at a higher price, and they get pulled down again. Um, there are a couple of products. Uh, uh, one article that um, I wrote a couple years ago looks at uh, VXX, which is the highest market cap uh, VIX ETF. And um, as of over the past, I guess since its inception in January 2009, it's lost more than 99% of its value. Um, that is incredibly uh, bad. Now, if you think about the VIX cash index level itself, um, it follows what is called a mean reverting process. It right. stays at about 20%. It spikes up when... Um, Russia goes into the Ukraine and then it comes back down again when the market becomes comfortable. Uh, there are a lot of times where the market's not doing much and VIX just hovers around 10% or 11%. Um, that's what people want 
to invest in. Right. It they does don't... not want it does not go down over time. What I'm going to tell people my takeaway from listening to you and, and reading your writings is they just can't. Th these investments that are currently available are not for them. No. They're, they're for people who are professionals, who don't have other jobs and get in and get out. And if they're using them for longer term, it's just wrong. It is plain wrong. And that, that is uh, what I, the point that I tried to make in that article is um, at the time that I wrote it, people were advertising volatility as an asset class. And these products is something you need to include with stocks and bonds in your overall as asset allocation. That's not true. I mean, while the correlation is hugely negative and there's a huge right. diversifying effect, the, negative, the expected rate of return is highly negative on an annual basis. Well, and me, if you use the, use the history of it, it's about 60% a year. Well, well, to me, that means that people are using a defective product and yours isn't defective. So thank you for yeah. developing what you're developing. <laughs> thank you. that's, that's Dr. Robert Whaley, professor at Vanderbilt University and the man behind the VIX, which obviously is the big focus on today. Stay with Kramer.